Hello, uh, Monday, coming at you live here at Insight Production Studios in Phoenix, Arizona. My name is Robert Morales, and today is Monday Market 15, the 15 minute show that takes more than that. <laughs> sometimes 30, sometimes four. I don't know, it depends on how much Ashley has to say today. So, uh, we're bringing you the most up to date information on the Phoenix housing market. I would like to introduce today uh, my uh, esteemed co host, Ms. Ashley Miller, Great American Title. Hey guys, it's Ashley Miller coming from Cabo San Lucas right now. We're out here celebrating my officer's 50th birthday party or 50th birthday. We're having a little fun out here, um, but of course we couldn't miss the show. So yeah, that, that's how that's how diligent she is about doing this show. She's in Cabo doing a housing market show about Phoenix. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's been crazy. It's been a crazy week. So if you uh, like what you see, you have any questions, go ahead and type them in those comments section below. I'm kind of monitoring things as we go along. I see Miss Paula's on, so hello. Uh, Francisco, hello. What's up, brother? <laughs> so if you have any comments, questions, go ahead and type them in the comment section. We love the love, so if you want to hit those love buttons, if you're on YouTube right now, hit the little like button because your thumb isn't busy doing anything else anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so we're here. We're here talking about the Phoenix housing market. Miss Ashley Miller, Great American Title. The title agency to go to when you have title needs, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We are awesome. And we work remotely. So yeah, no problem. <laughs> I didn't get the invite, so I'm I'm just gonna file my complaint at the title company. Uh, right. exactly. I'm still here in Phoenix, but that's fine. Uh, oh yeah, it's been fun. We you know, we're so blessed to have the opportunity to travel. Um, and I think this what kind of plays into what we were talking or we're going to talk about is um, providing opportunities through, you know, the stimulus check, right? Yeah. Not stimulus check is the reason I'm in Cabo, but um, it's giving people a little bit of an opportunity to, uh, to maybe play catch up or to store away money a little bit. Um, those who haven't been able to travel, maybe they do take a little family vacation. I'm not sure. Actually, I'd like to ask our audience if they got the stimulus check and how are they spending it? Are they paying off debt? Are they using it for a little mini vacation? Are they storing it in their soft drawer? Um, what what does that look like to them? Yeah, I think, I think it all depends, right? I mean, I had, uh, you know, my own personal needs. I had to buy some tires for my car. So I used my stimulus for that, but I think other people are in, um, you know, harder or harsher situations um, that can't do that. So I think it varies, you know. But uh, again, we'll we'll take uh, positions, opinions in the comment section. Um, obviously, not all of us can go to Cabo. <laughs> I don't have time. I'm busy. <laughs> but uh, you go. You're going for a work function, right? Yeah. So Susie, um, our escrow officer, her sister. This is her place. So um, we're really blessed that we got an invite to join them out here. Um, but so like you said, with your stimulus check, um, when I had gotten mine, I did the same thing. You know, I needed new battery on my car, my windshield, like was all jacked up. I needed a new windshield. Um, I paid off, you know, paid down a few of my, my credit cards that I wanted, you know, we always want to keep our credit cards at around like 15% of use. So I paid some of those down to get to that point. Um, bought groceries, what else did I do? Pretty much. Well, I mean, I mean, the whole point is to go out there and spend it. Uh, we want to boost our economy. We want things to get going. And part of uh, our economy is largely based on emotions. We want people to feel good about, you know, their spending. So they go out and spend more. I mean, the velocity of money is really what we're after, what the, the Fed is after. They're pushing that dollar and having it turn over. And when people are saving it, not spending it, they're not doing what the intention of it was. Exactly. And then, of course, Francisco says, get rid of debt, uh, then emergency funds, then have fun. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's got a clear line of uh, a list of things he needs to do. Yeah, I'm on the same page as him. Clear the debt, save a little, have a little fun. Well, and then you had sent me an article earlier about there's possibly a fourth one coming. I, yeah, I didn't know about it until you sent that to me today. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go ahead and post that real quick. I mean... Uh, you know, if you read the article a little bit, I mean, it gives a suggestion. It talks about infrastructure. It talks about uh, spending more money. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the best solution regarding our economy and the way things are going. Mm -hmm. um, the negative aspect of that, let me grab pick that up. The negative aspect about stimulating the economy or adding all this extra money is it devalues the dollar, one, but it's also aggravating prices. And we see that in housing. We see, you know, housing market just go up in value. I mean, 
uh, I'll pull this up too because this is what you sent me. <clears throat> Still working in, in Cabo. You know, she's sending me articles about housing. Yeah. But I'm going to be posting this. So year over year, we have, you know, 40, what is this? I wrote it. Uh, year over year, we have 18.6% growth. And that's that's tremendous in a, in a in a market where growth is normally only between two to three percent, or it should be, you know, a healthy market. And that and that's crazy to me to see to see such deals and such gains in such a short amount of time. And that's well, that's crazy year over year. We're going to continue to grow like that. You know, the trajectory is just a sliding scale upwards. I don't think you know we discussed this on last Monday about is there going to yeah. be? I don't think there'll be a boom. I think there'll be more of a plateau. Um, you know, go up and plateau a little bit and go up and plateau. It's a great time to buy a house right now. If anybody tells you it's not, they're crazy because the prices are just going to keep rising. Uh, I do think it's a great idea to use your stimulus check to potentially put down to purchase a home in the future. But I have found, you know, through talking to a lot of people, they've used their stimulus check to just play catch up. You know, so many people have gotten me. And so they're just constantly trying to catch up and catch up and catch up. So do I agree with the fourth stimulus check? I think it, it'll, it'll help a little bit. Um, but I think we're, a lot of us got behind, and I say us, meaning it could be you, me, or anybody. We got so far behind that we're just constantly playing that catch up. So I don't know. I mean, what's your opinion on that? Um, I, 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 as much as I, it, I guess it really depends on where in life you are. If you're struggling and you're, you're, it's hard for you to pay bills, um, you, you need the stimulus just to make it through a day. You know, groceries, uh, normal cost of living. Uh, you may be saving some of it just to pay your bills the next month. I mean, there's just so many people in that situation. Um, but there's other people who go and spend it on, you know, like GameStop. <laughs> They'll go spend it in the market trying to make more of it. And, it, and I don't believe... Uh, Putting in in certain people's hands will necessarily get us to where we need to be, and you see that you see that in our economic growth. You see that on unemployment rate. Um, I, I pointed this out last week. Last week we were looking at you know labor statistics and looking at the unemployment rate here in Arizona it hasn't moved. The needle really hasn't moved. Maybe after Christmas, you know, as we opened up um, you know some restaurants and as we hired during the Christmas season, you can see down over here. I mean. We're still at 6.7 percent unemployment. It hasn't. We haven't moved the needle whatsoever. So we're not really growing our economy. We're just giving people money to right. spend it on sometimes stupid things. I mean, to be honest, um, no. and it's elevating the prices of everything and even housing. What you're saying is like if we're if we're not moving that needle, who are we giving the money to? Like you know, I've read articles like they're in. Um, they have to have an income within a certain range or even people who are unemployed, but are we managing the people who are unemployed? Are they turning in weekly reports to show that they're looking for a job? Um, I mean, how are we, we're managing what, where the money is going and how people are spending it. Yeah. And so the, you sent me another article. I thought it was interesting too, about predictions in the Phoenix housing market. I'll put the, they, they did five predictions yeah um, <laughs> and i don't know if i believe in all of them but uh um, it's uh five uh, five arizona housing market predictions in 2021 um you can read through the article but uh so the number one uh prediction is that mortgage rates will uh will, will stay the same or lower um or interesting okay yeah and then prediction two we'll still have low inventory through 2021 uh, prediction three: uh, Mid millennials are expected to buy. I, I don't, I don't foresee that, and I'll, and I'll explain in a second. Uh, prediction four: uh, Owners, uh, because they're kind of uh, payment strapped, that they will be going into renting or suggesting that uh, that owners rent because they can rent their house higher than their mortgage payment, and then they can go rent something smaller or something more affordable as they rent out their house at a higher rate. Fair. So, and somebody else paying that equity and they don't have to like walk away from that. That's a very interesting prediction. Um, and I've actually heard of people doing this. So especially like empty nesters, they take their big house, they start renting it out and they go rent like a small flat somewhere or, you know, a little, a little cute condo and yeah. they use the money that they're making off of their, their primary residence to pay their mortgage there and, you know, continue to pay a lower rent somewhere else. It's not a bad idea, honestly, except the fact that, the rent rates are going up 
dramatically. I mean, yeah. dramatically dramatically whatever word you want to use i mean you right now an apartment in scottsdale is ranging about twenty seven hundred dollars for you know two three bedroom whereas you can get rates are so low you can get a mortgage for yeah. two or three bedroom depending on which about part of the value you want to live in so it is kind of a game i mean we talked about this before it's all thinking outside the box in a game and figuring out how you're going to manipulate the numbers yeah, and I think and I think right now um, people have enough equity. They purchased a year or two years ago, and may be a little bit strapped uh, to make that mortgage payment. I mean, I think the last statistic that I read was like 3.5 million by by Black Knight. 3.5 million people were in that for mortgage forbearance or having uh, problems paying their mortgage, and so that might be a good option, you know, to go and rent something smaller, more affordable as they rent out their house you know, and downsides a little bit because maybe they did purchase a little bit more than they should have. I mean, that may be an option. I I, I don't know, as a, is that a prediction in 2021? Possibly, I mean, uh, that also indicates that people aren't gonna make their mortgage payments, which is, you know, for a buyer out there, that might be a good sign. Hey, if uh, this person isn't able to make their mortgage payment um, and they're not able to go rent because rent is too high, they may end up selling and moving in. So that goes back to prediction number three, right? <laughs> So I talked about more millennials coming into the market as first time home buyers. And I'm like, uh, I'm not too sure because um, you know, everything that I'm reading is, you know, more millennials are staying home with their parents. You know, like in July, 52% of millennials were living in their parents at home. They're not going out there because you know, mortgages are too high, rent is too high. So they're staying at home. I don't know. Do you stay at home with your parents, Ashley? No, <laughs> right away. I mean, immediately when I turned 18 and um, I didn't move back into my home until uh, my grandfather, uh, he passed away. And cause my grandparents raised me, we talked about this. And uh, when he passed away, my grandmother, she didn't know how to take care of a big house. She didn't even know how to put gas in her car for crying out loud. So I moved in with her and helped take care of her for a little bit until I ended up buying the house I grew up in back in the day. And she used that money to buy this cute little, like kind of like manufactured dollhouse. We manufactured homes, looks like a dollhouse, it was so darling. But something that she could manage, you know, they had a property manager that took care of all the lawn and stuff. So at one point, yes, I did live back home. But I will tell you, like my brother, my little brother, he's 20. He just moved in with me on Wednesday. Yeah. How old so your brother? He's 20. He doesn't, here's the saddest part about it. He doesn't know anything about finances, credit, how to build your credit, secure credit cards. Like, so we've been, it's been kind of interesting um, educating him, teaching him, having him download all these apps like Credit Karma. Um, you know, people who do want to invest. You said some people were getting stimulus checks and they were using it to invest in, like you said, GameStop with that craziness. You know, downloading Robinhood or Fidelity and start, you know, trading money with stocks. And uh, so that's something we're working on. I have my, my dad holding his, uh, he got a stimulus check for I think it was like $1,400. I said, do not give that to him. I go, he can, he's gonna come live with me and I'm gonna teach him how to take that $1,400 and extend it and get a secured credit card so he can build his credit so he can turn around and be one of the millennials that buys a house. Yeah. It's so like, uh, it, it, again, I think there's a lot of predictions out there. And, and it, let me go back to that one screen one more time. The last prediction is that, that people are gonna have more cash to put down. I, I didn't really understand what this prediction was really getting at. They're just saying that uh, people are gonna have more cash uh, to buy their house and- uh, Well, I think that might go back to what we talked about, the out of the out of staters yeah. that are moving from per se California. Maybe. I knew you're, I knew you're gonna bring up California. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I'm like the California people. <laughs> Arizona, and they are. They're they have this opportunity to sell their homes for, you know, let's call it six hundred thousand million dollars and get a house that's equal to or bigger, uh, for half the cost. Yeah. So they're coming in and they're buying these properties, and you know, good for them. I think that's awesome that they have that opportunity. It sucks a little bit for us out here in Arizona, yeah. um, but I think maybe that's what that prediction was pertaining to. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of prediction in there. Like, it, like I said, the one that, that kind of struck, struck me the most is that millennials will be buying more. I don't necessarily know. I mean, you know, Violet and I are trying to purchase a house. 
our, our, we're trying to stay within a budget. You know, we initially got out there looking at houses for 350,000 because we wanted something small to upgrade and update on our own, you know, and wind up with, you know, 40, 50,000 in a house and then, you know, use it for us personally. But we've been priced out of that market. I mean, just, you know, so many offers in these last few, uh, last few months of the year, you know, asking over asking price, you know, 50, 60,000 above list price, waiving appraisals. I, I, I had that discussion with her. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. It's just, it's insane to do that because if there is a, a crash, if there's a market, there's always going to be a market adjustment at some point, but if there is a crash, then I don't want to be stuck holding, you know, a $450,000 mortgage and the house is only valued like 350. And I've been through that. I've been through that in 2008. I don't know if you've been through that. Oh, yeah. So going back to me buying the house that I grew up in, I lost it. I lost it in 2008. Okay. Um, I put myself in a negative AM loan, which was ridiculous and um, overpaid. And it was it was a poor financial uh, decision. And so but I think right now what's happening, like, let's just say you do buy a house that is you pay 450 in a year from now you know 83 percent of americans use the equity in their property for retirement so if yeah. millennials are buying houses overpriced right now and they're going to make a commitment to stay in that property at some point they're going to get it back uh it's a long-term play yeah well and and i purchased that home in 2004 um i think at uh, around 210,000, went up to about 320 market crash went down to about 190 and it took me about seven years to recuperate. And when I sold that thing, when I finally got around to selling it, I only had to pay a thousand bucks to get rid of it. And at that point, after like, you know, four years of renting it out at a negative rental rate, I mean, we were losing like uh, 200 bucks a month on that house just to rent it out because I wanted to preserve my credit, you know, to be able to get rid of it at a thousand. I was so blessed and so thankful. But, uh, and, I, and I see those signs again. I see that all happening all over again now. It's just crazy, you know, and I, and I get a little hesitant, you know, and wonder how things are going to go. But, you know, with with government intervention, with things that are happening in our in our economy right now, all this stimulus, all it's doing is driving up those prices. And will the prices continue? I, I believe so. Yeah. I mean, with, with government intervention, I mean, take whatever political side you want. It doesn't matter with political with uh, government intervention on these on these things, such as like our housing market. It doesn't, it, it's starting to price people out who are just normal buyers. I know. And, and, that's the, cash and, and be a part of a hedge fund just to purchase a property at this point. Yeah. And that part's been very frustrating. And, you know, circling back to our stimulus um, portion of the conversation, a little part of me thinks that our government, don't get me wrong, I loved when I got my stimulus check. I was like, heck yeah, this is like going to be a huge thing. <laughs> buying my house, trying to do this, trying to do that. But, um, do you think that it's it's enabling people to not move forward? Because now they they just know that they're going to get it. They they know they have this check, and now they can go blow it, and they can stay on their unemployment or whatever that looks like. And but it's enabling them. I don't know. I'm trying to to wrap well, my head on this whole concept. And then these people they're living in their homes basically for free right now because the government's not foreclosing on them. Is that enabling them as well to? You know, it's redirecting. Uh, what's what I'm looking for? Like uh, holding them accountable. Yeah, I mean, a large part of GDP, a large part of our economy, is built on confidence. Our dollar is built on trust. So a lot of what we're trying to do is built on feelings. It's not necessarily logic. It, it doesn't make sense to go spend, you know, forty, fifty thousand uh, uh, over the list price of a, of a house and waive the appraisal. It doesn't make sense, but it feels good to win. It feels good to get a house. And, and every part of our economy is built on a feeling. <laughs> so if, if what we can do if, uh, is in our economy today, if, if government is going to continue to give us money, then that gives us a confidence to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go blow it. You know, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go take a trip. I'm going to go, you know, buy a new car with that because you know what? In about two months, the government's going to give me more money. So it's doing in an effect what it's intended to do. Again, give people confidence to make that purchase, to take that, to take that step and purchase more than they probably should, you know, in the hopes that <laughs> you'll continue to get that money, but it's not guaranteed forever, you know, and it's not, it, we're not building a society. We're just building, you know, um, uh, we're essentially leveraging off the government for, for everything. 
And uh, I don't think that's sustainable. That's not, that's not smart. It's definitely not sustainable. What was that article you had uh, sent um, about the fourth, the fourth? Which one? The, four, the fourth stimulus check. Oh, okay. Well, why don't you put that up again? <laughs> Behind the fourth. Yeah, and so they, they mostly, it's it mostly clickbait. I mean, it got me to, to log in on it. Uh, but if you read about it, it talks about the current stimuluses and potential for a new one. Um, yeah. Again, people are still living paycheck to paycheck. Um, at, at the end of it, it's not, there isn't really a fourth stimulus coming, but the, the $2 trillion infrastructure plan is essentially another stimulus that's designed to help, you know, again, build our economy. But it's not built on jobs. It's not built on anything substantial. It's only built on, on money printing. Right. It's. I totally just lost my train of thought. Of what I was going to say about this. Um, it's okay, you're relaxing and calm. I wish I was there. I could be. I could be lost in thought with you. <laughs> you should see that. I mean, my view is just amazing right now. Uh, but I'm just trying to understand when they put, start putting out articles like that, like you mentioned clickbait. I don't, I mean, CBS News put it on there. It's yeah. very possible that it's something that's gonna happen. But when they start putting articles out there, I feel like it's like, people are just like, okay, I'm just gonna sit back and hang out and wait for the next one to come. Well, I, well that, without getting into conspiracy theory, I think what, what the government does, uh, I mean, I stopped watching TV like years ago. I don't watch regular TV. And I think what what uh, media does is it really kind of steers you, you know, and redirects you and redirects your emotions, redirects your thought. So if they throw out there this article saying, hey, there's a fourth stimulus. Oh, hey, uh, all right, I'm going to go buy. I'm going to go to I'm going to go to Cabo. I'm going to go wherever. I'm going to buy the new car that I've been planning on buying because, you know what, the government's going to bring give me another check and I'll be fine. And that's what they want. They want you to continue to purchase. So question about I want to ask a question to the audience that's watching. Um, has anybody used, and I may have kind of said a little portion of this before, but I'm going to, I'm going to ask it in a different way. I want to know how many people have actually used the stimulus check to save money as a down payment for a house. I'm very curious to see the answers. To taking a poll. I mean, I could take one on Zoom. But... I want to take a poll and see how many people have used that. Like I use a lot of mine um, to for my house, my new house. Whether it was. Um, you know, I was buying a door or, I mean, just small little things that the house needed. I used, you know, some money for that. Um, so I'm just very curious if people are saving, thinking forward, or they're still living paycheck to paycheck. And, and this is not new news. People have been living paycheck to paycheck forever. Yeah. It's now it's just more in the limelight. Well, and I, and I think with, with COVID and the things in our economy that actually, yeah, that are affecting that or you're or, or taking an impact to that or we're starting to realize the things that 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 economy is has produced really really hasn't gotten us further if you if you look at you know when my grandfather was was uh, working I actually you know when we were selling my grandparents house I looked at my grandma's you know ledger and books and uh, I he would get like 200 dollars a month and then he would budget out you know um like you know 20 dollars uh, a week and was able to buy eggs for like 12 cents and that sort of thing and, you know and and that was an economy where a single person worked you know my grandmother worked from home they had three kids and she was able to take care of the family and and in today's economy both parents have to work essentially and and if it's a single parent household they kind of they have to leverage off you know the the other parent off for money or uh, they have to be in a situation where they, they have to do a second job. You know, that, that's not a sustainable economy, or at least not one where, you know, people can enjoy life. It is challenging, man. I'm a single mom of three boys. It's very challenging, like figuring out, like managing, like, okay, if I decide to go on this trip, which I made that decision because I've been busting my ass and I deserve it, where am I taking away from? You know what I mean? If I, I have an Excel spreadsheet of where my money goes, where am I having to take away from in order to be able to do something like this? So it's just understanding and managing your money. And I don't think a lot of people do that. Or no. maybe they don't do it well. I'm not saying I do it well by any means, <laughs> but at least I try and I make the effort to do it. And then educating, you know, we're going back to educating our children and preparing everyone and 
uh, especially younger kids who file their own taxes and are getting these stimulus checks, yeah. are parents educating them on how to use it? Or are they going and blowing it on, I don't know, their girlfriend or some fancy thing for their car or I don't know, what team, new games, like you said, X or not Xbox, well, the new Xbox or because like, dollars for the new Xbox, GameStop Xbox, I don't know. <laughs> I think the biggest takeaway from this whole conversation that you and I are having is education, financial education. There's not enough financial education out there. Well, I don't, I don't think, again, if people were educated with money, I don't think they would want a stimulus. I mean, as, as I look at the bigger picture of our economy and where things are going, you don't necessarily want extra money out there. You know, you got to let things kind of fall. As a good parent, you know, you can give your kid uh, an allowance. But sometimes you got to like teach them, you know, a, a way to obtain their own money and in, in some fashion to work for it, to, to, to earn it in, in a way that's sustainable for them. Because if you just keep giving them an allowance, they're never going to learn, you know. Uh, and so we haven't been taught as an economy, as a society, how to learn <laughs> or been forced in that position to learn because it's, you know, we just get free checks. But well, we're part of our environment and yeah, it's just. And well, I, will be, whether it's our kids or us as adults. We've been trained by society, like you said, to behave the way we're behaving. Yeah. So I'm uh, Robert Morales, uh, RCO Network. I'm also an agent of HomeSmart. I'm with, uh, actually another great American title. Uh, what was your official title again? Uh, what did we establish that as? Oh, you know, today, no. Um, I'm the business development manager for Great American Title in Greyhawk. So we're here, we're here talking about houses, the Phoenix housing market, and the things that interest us a little bit. So if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and type them in, and uh, we'll take them. Um, and we'll even answer them next week, because uh, we're at about the 22-minute mark. We're uh, way over, like we usually are. <laughs> okay. I will say, though, so before before we head out, Ms. Miller, um, I, I believe, this is a hunch, right? This isn't like something in the numbers or the stats. And I can pull up any kind of stats that you want. I can pull up, you know, uh, it's, uh, whatever reports that you want to you know, look at as far as like housing, the way things are going, but it's all in hindsight. There's nothing that really predicts the future, you know, and it's all speculation. It's all kind of like a hunch. And the way things are going over this last week, because, um, you know, I'm an active agent in this market, I'm getting this feeling that we're going to soon see a lot of listings and how that manifests and how that works out. I don't know. Uh, but I will tell you, in the last week, I've gotten uh, about, that. Uh, about five calls to list houses. And these are sellers. Not, not, none of them are in a tight spot. But uh, I will say last week, I got a call on a Thursday saying, I want to list my house today. I don't, I mean, those, those people, uh, I can give you the whole situation, but uh, the, the long short of it is they wanted to sell, they wanted to sell now. And it was soon after that conversation, I got four more calls just this weekend. Great, that's fantastic. So I believe uh, things are definitely shifting. How that's happening, why that's happening, I don't know. Um, I can speculate that it is the economy. I think it's fear. People are you know, uh, wanting to list their house before they, the market crashes. There are concerns um, that there is gonna be a pullback in this market. I don't know what it looks like, but uh, again, just a hunch. Yeah, you know, and, and it's not a bad idea to to sell your house and take the equity that you have gained. I mean, what we've increased from 2020 to 2021 about 20% equity growth in properties. And if you have a house that's too big for you, you could take your equity downsize or I don't know, do whatever you want with it. Invest it, I don't know, save it, put it in your stock drawer. Yeah. And I will say, you know, people are in always in a situation where um, it's not always like a voluntary decision. There's always going to be some sort of aggravating factor or some sort of concern. And a really good agent that's out there, whoever you trust, whoever you feel is going to, you know, look after your best interest, um, will we'll kind of sit you down and kind of go over your scenario and what you want to do. And the immediate answer isn't always like sell today. It could mean, like in that article that we read, rent out your house while you and downsize a little bit so that you don't lose your your nest egg especially if you overpaid for a house especially if you you waived appraisal and paid a hundred thousand over list price and the market you know takes takes a dive 
you know, there, there are situ situations that you can have those discussions with an agent or somebody, again, you trust that will best direct you given your situation. It's not always cookie cutter. It's not always just always sell. It could be rent. It could be, you know, hey, let's look at maybe refi right now because refis are pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you know, if you want to contact me, if you want to contact Ashley, we can sit down and talk to you. You know, obviously Ashley can't because she's in Cabo. She got, she yeah. got the music going right now. <laughs> so yeah. full time. Anything. That's my work view today. Oh boy. <laughs> No, it's super awesome. I feel really uh, like blessed that I get an opportunity to work in such a great industry um, and, you know, have such amazing like people around me that are out there trying to like, you know, Robert, like trying to educate the public. So, you know, as we said last time, um, last Monday, and I'll reiterate it this time, it's time to start thinking outside of the box and um, come up with some different ways to manipulate your specific situation and i'm sure robert he thinks equally he's outside the box as i do <laughs> i don't know so if that's I, a good or a bad thing <laughs> uh, i don't know i, I need i need you here i i need your i need your mind process in the office not on i don't know pull deck somewhere <laughs> i know but hey i'm here so well maybe me and francisco will join you because he's wondering why we're not in cabo too Oh, hi, Francisco. <laughs> well, I'm interested to see. We'll touch. Um, we'll you know next Monday and go through some of the comments and see uh, what people are doing with their money. Yeah. So Thank again, uh, my name is Robert Morales uh, with RCO Network. I'm here with uh, Miss Ashley Miller from my Great American Title. Is there any last words, Miss Ashley, before we uh, salute? I want next week. Let's talk about money talks. Oh boy, money talk. So uh, <laughs> we'll be seeing you guys next week. So uh, join us on Thursday, at five o'clock for an edited. Me and Kelsey Rognes talk about uh, various things in life. Uh, Friday is Friday, and, uh, Friday with Frank. That's at the noon hour. So we'll be back here next week on Monday. Catch you guys uh, soon. See you later, Miss Ashley.